Hi friends! Today we're covering Ehoro, another brand featured on Fude Beauty and a huge thank you again to them for sending me these brushes. So I did not buy them but they did send them to me so I can share more about them on this video. Not only covering the prices but the bristle details and what tasks these brush will be best for. And also diving deeper into the brand so we can learn more about Ehoro and why it is so outstanding. So if First time here, hi, I'm Alicia. I like to talk about makeup, teach how to apply eyeshadow, and talk about Fude time and time again. Fude is brush in Japanese, and Fude Beauty is an online retailer where you have access to numerous brands for Fude from Chikohoro, Kyoreido, Nakamura, Seisakusho, a lot of brands that I did not know about initially when I first got into Fude, but having that as a resource not only for the brushes, but Fude Beauty also dives deeper into the actual brands so you have a better understanding of where they come from philosophy wise. Today we're covering six brushes in all in addition to some blotting papers as well as brush holders. If you want to check out anything specific, you can take a look at the timestamps down below or here on the chapter time bar. You can click either on the time or on the bar to visit a specific brush or just to skip around as you like. Ehoro's brushes are made in Kumano by a respected Fude workshop. They also specialize in sourcing high high quality beauty products such as Abura Torigami, facial oil blotting paper, nail scissors, eyelash curlers, and boxwood comb brushes. Ehoro's Kumano brushes are made in the traditional Fude way with bristles hand bundled and tips left uncut to ensure good product pickup, a smooth and even application of product, and a silky soft touch on the skin. Ehoro brushes have a refined appeal to them and do they? Not only will you see the brushes up close, but I have several demos in place so you can see them in action. And we'll also go over the sub brands in Ehoro as they have several to share. Starting off with the Makie series. Makie is a traditional Japanese lacquerware decorative technique dating back around 1200 years. Ehoro Makie is breathtaking with the fine details immaculately applied and luminescent in finish. And this is from Ehoro directly. The cherry blossom is one of Japan's most popular flowers and is a flower that lifts our spirits. Cherry blossoms have many different sizes and shapes of petals and Japanese people have a custom to enjoy these different forms each spring. The change of fiscal year in Japan is also in April when the cherry blossoms are in bloom and Ehoro created the Makie series to signify the start of all things. WP P2 Powder Brush, the Small Light Sakura Brush. This brush retails for $104. It is made with gray squirrel. This gorgeous brush features a dense stone head and Makie handle and is ideal for powder foundation, powder finishing, and bronzer leaves an airbrush finish. The touch on skin is airy with bristles made exclusively from high quality gray squirrel carefully selected by skilled craftsmen in Kumano, Japan. Next up, which I'm really excited to share. WP series. The brushes of the series feature mother of pearl like pearlescent handles and the distinctive Ehoro logo in kanji symbols. The 21 brushes come in a range of natural bristle types suited for various makeup applications. This series came from our RE series as a higher end range of brushes. One of the most beautifully designed brushes. I'm not sure if you can detect that iridescent look on the handles but it does have a pearlescent finish and you have the kanji symbols here on the handle as well as the brush number to identify it and again I adore the shorter handles. Not only does it make it easy to travel with and to pack, but again, when it comes to the eyes, as I had explained this with cheek products and complexion products about the GP1, I think it ultra advantageous to have a shorter handle for eyeshadow application. You feel close to the eye, you have a little bit of control. You can hold the brush lower on the handle so you can get a more blurred like finish, but the brush is still close enough to your eyes so it doesn't go rogue. Starting with the WPS1 Canadian Squirrel Brush. This brush is ideal for applying base shadow and shadow into the crease. Canadian Squirrel is a rare and valuable bristle material with a softness on par with gray squirrel, but more durability. The bristles have good pickup and allow you to build color. Canadian Squirrel has become a fast favorite for me, not only for cheek brush 
brushes, but especially for eye and for the reasons Ehoro laid out. Because soft like gray squirrel, but with the durability factor in place, it also has a little more blending power, which I think is the deluxe package for me when it comes to an eye brush. And the fact that it's flat on both sides, but has a nice fluffy tip. And I adore these designs as I feel appropriate to accomplish one and done eye looks with. If you are one to just wear one or two eyeshadow colors, but you need the brush to be large enough to whip the color across your lid and then blend that color through the crease successfully. In addition, have it flat so you can maybe bring the color under your lower lash line with some precision so it doesn't travel too far down. I think, again, an ideal tool just so you can streamline your eyeshadow brush collection. If you don't want a ton, maybe you don't wear eyeshadow a lot, but you just need that one brush so for the occasion when you do, you'll be able to successfully apply your eyeshadow and it'll have a beautiful finish. And this brush retails for $34. I think a great price point for Canadian Squirrel and the design of the handle and ferrule. Great pick for that price point. Next up, we have the WPS3 eyeshadow brush. This is Sokoho Goat. It retails for $18. The tapered shape of this brush works well for many different parts of the eye. The outer corners, under eye, brow bone, smudging color along the lash line. And can also be used for precise and small detail highlighting. Is a very handy all-rounder. The bristles are soft and elastic with good product pickup. As you see, this is undyed Sokoho Goat hair. I already used it today for my shadow application. And with goat hair, you definitely have that durability and fantastic product pickup. It will pick up more than a great squirrel brush would. It'll pick up a little more than Canadian squirrel as well. So if you love eyeshadow, if you want the color to appear on your eyes, and you'll definitely go for a goat hair brush for the eyes. Blenders are insanely popular, yes, because of their versatility, especially to take the color through the crease. Now this brush is in particular is a little more stiff than let's say a gray squirrel blender would be so if you have very soft or sensitive eyelids maybe check out the canadian squirrel or maybe one that is made with gray squirrel but again the soko goat hair is very soft i would make sure i hold the brush at the very edge of the handle and use the very fine tip of it to pull color across the lid so it doesn't move your skin. But know that yes, the Canadian squirrel brush is much softer than the Sokoho Goat, but I like Sokoho Goat as well as Psycho for my eye brushes. So I think this is a great pick, especially for $18. You have the smaller handle, fantastic to travel with. It's not gonna take up any room whatsoever. So if you have one of those makeup bags that are designed to hold both makeup and brushes, but usually the brush sections are not large. They're very tiny. So to have a brush of this size and you can utilize that part of your makeup a bag and just have everything in one place I think will be very useful now although I wouldn't necessarily use this type of brush to pull color through my lid I think you still can you might just have to spend a little time but if you have smaller eyes it wouldn't be that huge of a challenge amazing for outer corner lay down so it's not so big it will lose control of the color placement I think just big enough for that application to be precise and once you start swirling and twirling it'll keep that blend right under the crease or if you need to keep it lower the brush is tapered enough for it to fit right into that line and the final brush here from the WP series I have is the s4 blending brush goat hair and this retails for $19 this popular candle shaped blending brush enables you to blend shadows seamlessly and with ease for a smooth gradation of color it can also be used for one and done eye colors so all that I have described with the Canadian squirrel which is more expensive that one retails for $34 this dyed goat hair brush retails for 19 I think if you're fine with it not being as soft as Canadian Squirrel, a fantastic pick. So if you were to just buy these two brushes, I think still at a fantastic price point where they will cover several tasks for you to achieve a complete eye look. I use the S4 to blend the teal shadow from my Suku quad as well as apply some color on my lid. So although flat, it still has a great taper and it is smaller 
than the Canadian squirrel brush you see here side by side. It doesn't have as much fluff as it either, but I like the fact that it's a touch stiffer. That means it's, it's gonna be a little more precise in its application. The Canadian squirrel brush here, the S1, has a lot more flow. So because of that, you're gonna get a wider blend, especially when you pull this through the crease. The S4 is gonna keep the color tighter, right? But if you have a smaller lid, you could use the full surface area of the brush to place color successfully on the lid, but all throughout, from lash line to crease. And if you wanted to blend the edges a little bit, you can turn the brush on its side or just keep it on its side. Instead of turning it sideways, just pull the color through the crease and you see there's a really nice flow there with the brush that will successfully blend the color through the crease. And if you want more color under your lash line but you don't wanna take it too far down, the brush is tight enough to keep the color right under your lash line. And again, because of the nice taper here, I think appropriate to use with a highlight color to place here on the inner corner. If you wanna take some color on and under your brow bone, maybe some highlight here on the bridge of your nose. So you can use that brush for several tasks. And again, as I had mentioned before, the size is fantastic for travel and again, just for self-application. Just think it makes the user more confident in applying eyeshadow because of the handle size. And also the multifunctionality of the design, you don't feel compelled to grab different brushes. I think it just streamlines your makeup application process in regards to eyeshadow. And because of that, I feel it will also encourage you to wear eyeshadow more often and maybe use colors that you were unsuccessful in blending. Maybe you didn't have the right tool. So it's going to widen the possibility and just maybe help you use more of your makeup collection. Other popular WP series brushes, Fude Beauty wanted to mention, see S2, S3, and S7. All of these are eyeshadow brushes and are well reviewed. The P1, P2, PC1 powder brushes, C1 cheek brush, and LQ3, the Kolinsky liquid foundation brush. I'll make sure to put all these brushes down below along with the links that will be affiliated. I thank you in advance. You don't have to use them. As long as you have the name of the brush, you can search for it on the Fude Beauty site. Up next, we have the G series. And this series is a variant of the RE series with new designs that are not found in the WP series. When we were developing Ahoto Writes, a new range of brushes, we decided on gold metal with fittings with black handles and a sense of weight. The most popular G series brush from Ahoto is the GS1 eyeshadow brush. I do not have that one, but this is what it looks like. And again, I'll make sure to link that brush down below. First up, we have the GP1 powder brush. This retails for $93. It is made with gray squirrel. With this wide flat shape of bristles, this brush is ideal for sweeping finishing powder across the face. And again, the size of the brush and its compact design with the longer gold ferrule just makes it beautiful to behold. On the demo, you saw that I used the GP1 to apply my Charlotte Tilbury Air Brush Flawless Finishing press powder, as well as the Suku Melting Powder Blush in Tomoshibi. Gray Squirrel has a much softer pickup than Goat, but I think ideal for normal to drier skin types. And you have a lot of bristle in here, and Gray Squirrel is considered to be a premium bristle, and that is why it is more expensive in addition to the lacquerware as well as the gold ferrule and the overall design of the brush. I do prefer shorter handles for self-application. I just feel it allows the user to have more control over their makeup application and you feel a little more confident, I think, when applying powder in this case, since Gray Squirrel is only appropriate to use with powder products. So whether you apply as the description said powder foundation blush bronzer or you use it for finishing i think great for all those tasks especially for finishing because it is a longer bristle it has a nice wispy effect on the skin so once all is applied said and done once you take that final brush over all your makeup it will not be disturbed nothing will move in terms of the blush or anything that was placed everything will remain put but that final finish will leave behind a smoother skin-like glow and again, we'll just ensure that 
powderiness is not left behind and everything is well blended. You can still use this for bronzer and blush because of the dome shape. You can accurately pick up some powder here and you have this nice slant to place right into the hollows of your cheeks as well as the apples of your cheeks. So though a bigger brush, I think you can be strategic in how you apply your blush. Just take it on an angle here. You could even strike across a highlighter powder, maybe not so so shimmery in nature, something a little more pearlized in finish and have a really nice glow here on the cheekbones. But I especially love the GP1 to use with colors like Tomoshibi that has that terracotta hue and is appropriate, I feel, to be applied on the hollows as well as the cheeks. So because it is a bigger brush, it will take the product onto that region in a way that won't have it blend out too far, but will stay intact and again, we'll just leave behind a beautiful blush finish on the cheeks. The GCH1 Slanted Highlighter Brush, Gray Squirrel and Sokoho Goat Blend. Now you know how I love my squirrel and goat hair blends. This brush retails for $61 and you know how I love me a slanted powder brush. This brush is designed for applying highlighter around the eyes and bridge of nose. This brush also works for blush and bronzer. The gray squirrel brings softness and an airbrush finish and the Sokoho goat provides a little body and bounce again, which is why I love a goat hair and squirrel hair blend. You get best of both worlds and in the demo here I used it to apply the star glow highlight powder from Natasha Denona's glam face palette as well as of course Suku's melted powder blush in Tomoshibi into the hollows of my cheeks the brush is small enough for you to apply I think highlight successfully I know in mine I look like your typical teardrop brush that you feel comfortable using for a highlighter as it is small enough to get it right where it needs to go precisely but if you just place the powder here on the edge of the brush and whisk it on your cheekbones, I think you can still be successful with that highlighter application. Also, if you tend to use a powder that, again, it's not shimmery in nature, it's more pearlized, it provides a little more radiance than shine, then I think really nice just to strike it not only on the cheekbones, but from higher up here on the apples of the cheeks and higher towards the temples, I think is a nice application. I have to use an angled brush in the hollows of my cheeks. I think, again, that's just an appropriate region to use this brush on. Also great for the apples of the cheeks to whisk it. Now, because it is made also with Sokoho goat hair, it's not going to be the softest. If you know you're sensitive to goat hair and you only stick to gray squirrel, then this might not be a great pick. However, if you feel gray squirrel solo is just too soft for you, it's not enough product pickup, then this will be a great pick. I think for $61, still expensive, but if you're looking mid-tier in terms of price range, this brush is gonna last you forever. And cannot ignore this gorgeous design. I adore the longer ferrule with the short handle. Again, ideal for travel, especially if you're limiting the number of brushes you decide to tag along. So you could use this for under eye powder application. Yes, not small, but you could still do it because of the angle design. The tip of the brush fits nicely here under the eyes. Strike some bronzer or blush along the hollows, on the apples of your cheeks, some highlighter. Even before those steps, you can successfully apply some pressed powder or loose powder all over the face. I wouldn't use this for finishing. I think a little too stiff. If you happen to have the GP1, then sure, for finishing, right? But I understand the appeal of this brush being much cheaper than the GP1, you could cover quite many a task with this one alone. And if you're not one to buff and finish anyway, then fine. And the last one here I have is from the RE series. Ahodo designed the RE series with vibrant red handles and silver ferrules. In the beginning, Ahodo writes, when makeup brushes were designed for professional makeup artists, they mainly featured long handles. About 20 years ago, the RE series was created as a portable sized brush. The series has been popular because the handles do not compact the mirror when used in tight spaces when on the road and are lightweight. This is the RE18-2 cheek brush made with Gray Squirrel and this brush retails for $52. The characteristic of Gray Squirrel is that it feels good against the skin, 
but that's not their only quality. The ability to pick up just the right amount of powder product and apply it for a natural airbrush finish in a few swift sweeps are unparalleled. The ferrule is between round and flat, so you can use it to your skin in a circular motion or sweep horizontally. Avoid pressing too hard with the bristles due to their more delicate nature. Another popular RE series brush it says here is the RE20-1 powder brush also all made with gray squirrel i am assuming also more expensive now i thought this brush very unique because although it is made with gray squirrel because of the rounder design it's round and almost flat but you see mostly round and the shorter bristles i think it has more feedback than let's say the GP1. The GP1 doesn't have as many bristles longer here, so it feels a little more floppy on the skin. And as I had mentioned before with the GCH1, with the blend, if you don't like to use Gray Squirrel because it's not enough pickup or if you don't feel there's enough blend for you, I think you would love the RE18 too because I think this brush, especially given the bristle length, has incredible product pickup and also precise blending. So of course, I applied my Suku Melting Powder Blush into Moshibi again, into the house of the cheek as well as the Sumido color on the apples. And I used this to apply my Pat McGrath under eye blurring powder here although i would use the angled brush instead if you want something softer then the re brush i think will be great for this application also as i'd mentioned with the gch1 angled brush one and done for multiple tasks because this is round you can get your swirl and twirl on not only for press and loose powder application after your foundation i think great for powder foundation and it's going to lay down more product than the gp1 even though it's smaller sure it might take you a little longer to cover your entire face but it's going to pick up more product is a little more dense than that powder brush and will just buff it beautifully into the skin and again since it is smaller you can then apply a little more powder foundation on the portions that need more coverage without totally overwhelming your skin ideal for cheek product application i mean a round brush for blush i think is so intuitive to use here especially for bronzer so although smaller the advantage to that is you can get a more precise application of bronzer, precise application if you use contour, but if you want it to look more diffused, if you are applying a bronzer, just take it along for a ride with the circular motion again. Advantageous to use with a round brush, so the blend is just beyond smooth, but it keeps it right where you need the color to stay, but will distribute it in a way that looks natural, not overly made up. If you're thinking, mm, but what about highlighter, Alicia? The same strategy I described when talking about the GCH1, just apply your powder here on the very edge of the brush, strike it along where you need it, or just take short strokes here on the high points of your cheeks, and I think you'll be fine with that application. Just don't pick up so much highlighter powder that you can't control the distribution, but if you're very light with it and you build accordingly, I think you'll be fine with the round brush and highlighter application, no worries. And given the price point of $52, while I understand that's, that's expensive, yes, again, if you don't have to buy another brush and just use this one for all the tasks I mentioned, then I think it's a great buy, especially if you take care of it. Gray Squirrel, it is recommended that you wash every one and a half to two months it is not as durable as goat hair so in between makeup applications make sure you have your microfiber towel on standby to release the pigment from the brushes you don't want to completely clean it so that's what you have to remember and store it in a cool dry place i keep these silica gel packets in my brush boxes here just to ensure that there's no dampness or moisture in these areas and the bristles are dry and won't mold. Those are all the brushes. Now it's time to get into the oil blotting paper. There are three different sizes of blotting paper and they're available in pack quantities. This is the Ehoro oil blotting paper from Toji Temple Kyoto 
T400 40 sheets in each pack. In Japanese, Obudatori Gami oil absorbing face paper is a popular beauty product. When placed on the skin, it removes excess sebum without disturbing the makeup underneath. Ahodol's blotting paper is made of carefully selected earth-friendly hemp. It is a high-grade pure washi traditional Japanese paper made by a mechanical method through a process similar to producing gold leaf. The fine fibers of Ahodol's washi paper are incredibly soft and smooth to the touch and they provide outstanding absorbency. I believe this packet that houses 40 retails for $4, so great price point here. You just open the flap, it's a little envelope, and you can take one out. And I think ideal, especially if you need your makeup to keep well all day, right? You don't wanna use a tissue that could be a little too harsh. It might pick up too much product and will leave behind an uneven finish. So these are very delicate to use on the skin throughout the day, especially if you don't wish to keep applying powder all day because if doing so, the skin could look heavy after numerous powder applications. And I'm placing it all over my face. But you can see the shine is diminished, but my makeup is still intact, which is what we want. We don't want it to look obvious like, oh, she definitely dabbed there. I see a spot. And they're very lightweight in nature and they don't take up any room at all. So instead of you having to carry around a separate powder compact and brush, which we really should not be carrying around loosely in our makeup bags anyway. So I think carrying around the blotting papers tackles that issue and far more easy to use and again, apply makeup throughout the day. And lastly, we have our brush guards. There are four sizes of brush caps available. I have three out of the four, each recommended for a specific brush or the larger ones can be used to store two brush the caps are made from imitation suede polyester. So the bigger one here, I like to slide the brush from handle to brush head so much that you can grab the handle from under and you can slide the brush up successfully and to remove, just slide it towards the top and your brush is free. This is the medium size and if you want it to save space, you can definitely maybe place two brushes here. So in the same fashion, I'll insert the brushes from the top, grab the handles from the bottom, just pull them down, and then you have your brushes successfully encased in the holder. These are great if you want to maintain your brushes shape. For instance, the GP1, it could get a little flary on the sides, right? So once you've washed it and once it's dried, you can store it in the brush holder and that's how you keep it in your drawer your box, however, or you can store it upright if you have a brush holder here. It has a shorter handle, so just make sure whatever holder you are using is short enough so that the brush head doesn't get crushed. If you're one to carry around your brush, I know sometimes you gotta do what you gotta do. I would just make sure I grab one of these. For instance, if you wanna carry around your RE series brush, just make sure you have the brush cover on so it doesn't get damaged in your makeup bag, right? This will ensure the delicate bristles do not break or snag, do not bend or get abused in any way. So if you're one, again, to carry your brushes in the bag, just at least make sure there's a cover on the brush head. And the smallest one here will definitely fit at least one eyeshadow brush. So here we can slide in the Canadian Squirrel one. This is quite big. For one, if you wanted, we can combine two just to maximize space, you know? Depending on the width of the handles, so you can successfully fit in two to make sure they're small enough and if you wanna use them, but I think that'll be too squished. So I would then, instead of using the small one, the 300, or excuse me, seven 300 size, I'll probably use the two 300 size, it's the medium one. I think that will successfully house two eyeshadow brushes 
and they're not overlapping each other inside the holder. So that is it. A Hodo from Food Ape Beauty. I hope this video was helpful to you. Let me know if you knew about A Hodo before seeing this video, what you're thinking about. Again, if you have them already, what are your favorites? Again, a huge thank you to Food Ape Beauty for not only sending the brushes, but for also sending the information straight from the A Hodo workshop. I'll see you down in the comments, fam. And until then, that is. A wrap. Thank you all so much for watching. I hope this video helped. And if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and maybe consider subscribing to my channel. And until then, I will see you on here again with another review tutorial. Fude Beauty Extravaganza or Anime Get Ready With Me. Take care and I will see you again soon.